on the new cabinet lineup for Malaysia. And for some more analysis, let's speak now to Amir Farid, a political analyst with KRA Group in Kuala Lumpur. Amir, what do you think of this lineup? Were there these were these the ministers that you were expecting to see? Well, um, it is rather expected. Um, given uh, the pool of MPs uh, that was supporting uh, Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin as Prime Minister. What surprised me, um, however, um, somehow seems to be uh, that his party, Besatu, uh, has got the lion's share of uh, the cabinet positions, 10 counting the Prime Minister. Um, and this is despite um, Amno, um, another uh, party in this new component being the largest bloc in uh, the new Prikata National uh, Coalition. But there were some very uh, good surprises, um, good lineup of uh, uh, balance of uh, technocrats, for instance. Um, and it was surprising to see especially the choice of uh, Minister of Finance. Uh, that was a pleasant surprise. All right. So you've mentioned the you know, that this particular lineup is remarkable by the fact of who isn't in it and the fact that Brasatu, uh, many from Brasatu are there. He did mention that he wanted to have a cabinet that's free of corruption. He was at pains to talk about that. Do you think that's why uh, senior AMNO leaders like Zahid Amidi were left out? Exactly. So, uh, Tan Sri Muhyiddin uh, st uh, stuck to his words and his promise uh, in his inaugural speech to the public that this would be a cabinet without uh, those facing corruption charges. And uh, that is why um, Amno luminaries, um, st uh, top uh, former leaders such as former Prime Minister Najib is not in, uh, former Deputy Prime Minister and Party President Zahid is not in, uh, former um, um, former fellow terrorist minister and the former secretary general of AMNO, Tengku uh, Adnan, is all, they're all not in. So uh, AMNO um, made, sorry, uh, Tan Sri Nguyen made good with, its, uh, with his uh, promise uh, to the public. And um, it is very interesting to see how this now new co uh, combination uh, work. What, what also interests me is um, the new, comp the new uh, senior ministers. So now there is um, uh, two tiers of, of, of cabinet. The first time in Malaysia we have senior ministers um, and other ministers, but this, this is reflective of the challenges facing the country. So these four senior ministers will be tasked to, uh, with overseeing uh, critical issues facing Malaysia, such as the economy, um, infrastructure, uh, education, and of course, uh, social welfare, as well as public security. Mm -hmm. The Prime Minister said that he didn't feel the need for a Deputy Prime Minister because of the fact of those appoint appointing those four senior ministers. Well, what do you think is the thinking behind this lack of a DPM? Well, uh, the thinking is um, actually that uh, an appointment of a Deputy Prime Minister uh, at this stage of one person or two person uh, maximum uh, would have been a destabilizing uh, factor in this uh, still uh, fragile um, uh, coalition in early days of this new uh, government. Therefore, I think uh, Tan Sri Muhyiddin, the Prime Minister, made his political calculations and therefore avoided um, the, um, uh, the need to appoint a Deputy Prime Minister. But, I, but, but again, Deputy Prime Minister position is not a constitutional position. And if he so wishes at some point, he may appoint a deputy uh, prime minister if he's, he feels that there is a need for it. But what, what is more interesting is uh, he did mention that these four senior ministers, they can chair cabinet meetings in his absence if he is traveling overseas. And this goes to show that this new prime minister, uh, Muhyiddin Yassin, is not just uh, going to focus on domestic um, issues, but also will do a lot more overseas engagement. Mm -hmm. Amir, what do you make of the, of the fact that this looks like a very big reward for Sabah and Sarawak? Of course, uh, Sarawak um, is a critical factor in this. They are, as people say, uh, the kingmakers, and they have been handsomely rewarded, if I'm not mistaken. It's only, I've, I've had a look at, um, at the cabinet list, but probably I've missed it out. But four uh, cabinet members from uh, Sarawak and five, sorry, in total, Sabah Sarawak, five uh, cabinet members. And um, there will be, uh, all eyes will be um, also on Sarawak, whether or not um, 
they will get an increased sh uh, share of all royalties, um, which uh, apparently was promised during um, the discussions and negotiations of support. Um, but it's also interesting to see that given the backdrop of the um, decrease, the sharp uh, uh, downward trend of oil uh, prices. Um, of course, Sarawak, again, as I said, the East Malaysian vote is critical. Sabah is not fully, uh, is not on board. As we know, the Warisan uh, state government uh, maintains that it is supporting Dr. Mahdi, but would like to work with federal. So I think uh, with what has been rewarded for Sarawak, it is also uh, in anticipation that it, it may entice the current Sabah uh, uh, Warisan um, government to to consider working very closely with this federal um, government. Mm -hmm. Amir, let's talk about one of the more surprising appointments today, Ismail Sabri as Defence Minister. What do we know of him and why do you think he's been picked for this particular role? Okay, Ismail Sabri uh, is made a Minister of Defence as well as a Senior Minister. And in the absence of top-ranking AMNO uh, leaders such as Zahid Hamidi and Deputy Muhammad Hassan, uh, Ismail Sabri uh, is the senior most ranking in the AMNO hierarchy. And therefore, he has been appointed in this uh, senior and prestigious uh, position to reflect his, position, his standing uh, in the party hierarchy. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, don't... Uh, we forget that Ismail Sabri was also the leader of opposition when AMNO and Barisan National were in opposition and therefore Ismail Sabri, uh, and Ismail Sabri has had, um, it, uh, he is, is a very well-known figure within uh, AMNO the party but of course he lacks um, national clout or even um, international recognition and in this and in this day and age where um, defense um, ministerial work uh, has a lot to do with foreign um, uh, engagements. Uh, it is um, surprising uh, in that sense that Ismail Sabri is given um, this uh, position. Mm. And with this lineup, uh, Amir, and looking at just how much work the, the Malaysian Prime Minister now has to do, uh, what do you make of the priorities of Muhyiddin Yassin now? With this lineup, so, as, as as we can see, key priorities um, uh, is of course the economy. Um, it, it comes against the backdrop of a weaker than expected economic growth last year in 2019, uh, hovering just above four um, percent. The lack of um, the potential lack of fiscal. Uh, flexibility, uh, given the drop in oil prices, um, is also a great concern for the Malaysian Treasury. And therefore, we've seen an, uh, the appointment of a uh, banker, uh, Tanku Zafro, who is CEO of CIMB, to be the Minister um, of Finance. Um, and that is reporting to A, uh, and then also reporting, not just, uh, uh, sorry, not reporting, but overseen by uh, a senior economic minister um, uh, in uh, Dr. Sri Azmin Ali, who is also uh, Minister of International Trade and Industry. So, the, of course, focus, main priority is economy, um, health, uh, healthcare, of course, in light of the coronavirus, COVID-19, um, uh, public um, health um, uh, challenges. And we see there um, the Minister of Health is assisted by two deputy ministers, which is not usually the case. So, in terms of, uh, and, and of course, another priority area, which uh, the Prime Minister has um, mentioned in his inaugural speech, education. Education is something that is close to his heart. And we see that um, now he has split education once again to ed uh, education for lower education and another ministry for higher education. So these three are key priorities with, of course, economy um, is the main focus here. All right. And sorry, I have to mention that apart oh, yes. from the Minister of Finance, we have a very seasoned hand, uh, former Minister of Trade, Mustafa Muhammad, as the Minister of Economic, uh, sorry, uh, Minister of Economic Affairs, uh, or EPU. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure what's the current designation, but it, but the de facto Economic Minister. So this goes to show that it's a combination of a seasoned hand and a uh, another technocrat, uh, uh, a technocrat from the banking sector. So therefore, the priorities are clearly economy for uh, this cabinet and government. Mm.
Mm -hmm. Well, with the challenges that the Malaysian economy is facing right now, it certainly does need a seasoned hand. Thank you very much, Amir, for that perspective. We've been speaking there to Amir Farid, a political analyst with KRA Group in Kuala Lumpur, about Malaysia's new lineup for the cabinet for the new Prime Minister, Mohidin Yassin. Thank you very much.